I'll go ahead. Let me let me know when you're ready. Oh, is that Tony calling in? We are recording. All right. It is Monday, August 17th, 2020. This is the Trophy Club Municipal Utility District MUD meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum and it is 6.33. We'll call the meeting to order. Start with citizens' comments. Um, an opportunity for citizens to address the board on any matter, whether or not it is posted on the agenda. The board is not permitted to take action on or discuss any comments made to the board at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The board will hear comments on specific agenda items prior to the board addressing those items. You may ask to speak for up to four minutes or the time determined by the president or presiding officer. Citizen comments should be limited to matters over which the board has authority. Lori, do we have any citizens comments? No, sir. We do not. All right, moving on, reports and updates. Uh, staff reports, item one, uh, they were all sent out. Does anybody have any questions about the reports or staff, would you like to weigh in? Anything we need to be aware of? Take that as a no. Okay. Uh, if not, then let's move to the consent agenda. Uh, all matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the board of directors and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Um, two, consent. Uh, consider and take appropriate action to approve the consent agenda. A, July 2020 combined financials, July 20th regular meeting minutes, and C, July 30th joint uh, meeting minutes. And I believe, Lori, you sent an update on that out as well, correct? You're muted. You're muted, Lori. Yes, I did. There was um, a, just an error on the 20, uh, the July 30th meeting minutes. It said 2020 twice at the top in the header. That is the only change. It's been corrected. Okay, great. Thank you. Does anybody wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, if not, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the uh, consent agenda items A through C. Director Wilson uh, moves that we consider and take appropriate action on the consent agenda items A through C. Do I have a second? I second. Kelly seconds it. Um, Mr. Rose. I want to make sure that's understood. That includes the corrected minutes for July 30th, 2020 as amended at the dais. Okay. That's correct. So the motion by Director Wilson to consider and take appropriate action, uh, making sure we take into the revised updated version of the July 30, 2020 joint meeting minutes. That was uh, direct, uh, that was seconded by Secretary Treasurer Castingay. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. Okay, uh, regular session, item three, consider and take appropriate action regarding the approval of a new telephone system, staff. I'll take this one. Uh, so the current phones that we have now is an old dollop phone, NEC phone system that used to be split with the town. Uh, we are looking at going on our own system uh, and go into a voice system, uh, which will actually wind up saving the district and amount of money monthly. Uh, and allow us more flexibility to be able to answer voicemails, answer calls, uh, and be able to handle, every, handle the operations of the business there uh, more remotely. Uh, so the recommendation is to go ahead and sign a 39 month contract. Uh, with that would be three, first three months free, uh, not to exceed the 16,000 to 2761 with eight by eight. Uh, questions, comments. I, I have one question. This this group we're going with eight by eight. Is that what they're called, Stephen? 
That is correct. I have not heard much about them. Um, any background uh, about them? Yeah, they're well known there. Uh, they were one of the, one of the best price wise uh, to go out there for the voice phones and they were recommended by our uh, IT third party that we use uh, who will be doing the monitoring of the phone system itself. So is this, does this indicate that currently we're paying 1350 per month and we would go down to 413? What's the, I see a today's total and a monthly total. So the today's total is all the equipment replacement for these phones. The monthly total is what's going to be going down more than 50%. Okay, so the current monthly. $800. We, we pay $800 right now to AT&T per month for the phone lines that we have. And, and it'll go down to 413. Uh, it's actually going to go down a little bit cheaper than that. The, uh, the, the taxes, they can't take them off prior to getting a contract and getting everything filed in there. Uh, so they will be removing the taxes on there. Okay. So they're, they're going to credit us. I, I tried to get a contract without the taxes and they can't do that ahead of time. Uh, but it will go down. We have the recurring for the 219 show in there. Uh, so once they get the paperwork, and they've already got the taxes in form. Once they file and get everything together, then they will reimburse us anything that's been paid and then remove the taxes going forward. So in reality, we'll have less than a four month break even on our investment in the equipment. Right, and the first three months is actually free. So we won't pay anything monthly recurring for the first three months. So it's really a three year contract in, in essence of what we're paying? That is correct, it's a three year contract with the first three uh, included into it. And we'll basically be getting our money back on the equipment replacing after the first three months of the savings. So it winds up from what we're paying now. Any other questions of staff? Mr. Rose. Did anyone review the 9-11 limitations that are linked in the contract and are they acceptable? Yeah, so the 9-11, what that means is, is there's a, another party that answers the 9-11 calls uh, and they route you out from there. They'll have your contact information. They, they port that out to the desk, dispatch for 9-11. Or from the dialogue, the 911 calls. The way I read it, it was worst case, it may not be available. I just wondered if that's acceptable. Uh, it was standard from there, and I'm not sure is, if it's unacceptable. I mean, it's something I've read before. Like I said, there's a paragraph on there talking about that it ro will route the call. The unacceptable part is it somehow gets disconnected or they can't route your call to 911. Even is the existing phone system a VOIP system? No, it's not. It's it's we're we're paying right now. We have uh, I'm going to say roughly 300 ascensions. Uh, this is from the town. Now they're 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 kind of branch out different ways and the way our mapping is for our phone system. Uh, but it's an old dialog phone, so I mean it's all dial up. And we're actually uh, currently having uh, several issues with it right now, where our phone system has been going down over the last uh, basically week now, week and a half. Uh, they've replaced a few parts on there, but they're having trouble figuring out what's causing the phone power supplies to go down. Of the questions, comments of staff? I think this is a good system. Used it Mark. before to previous Mark, city. You're on mute. Mark, you're on mute. Yeah, I had uh, only one question comment because I'm an old telco person from way back. Uh, what kind of guarantee do they have for dial tone? Well, one of the things that a landline has due to the SEC and that stuff is you're guaranteed a dial tone on a permanent landline. Wait systems are typically not guaranteed to have a dial tone when you need it. Uh, they can go out, et cetera, et cetera. What kind of guarantee do you have that you will have dial tone when you need it in an emergency? I'm not sure I'd answer that. Like I said, I'm, I'm relying on uh, M3, who's our IT there, and who, who backed the system says one of the better ones out there. I can't guarantee, I'm not sure what the guarantee as far as the phone system itself and dollar. Okay. Yeah. That's, I, that's I, I still have a hard line at my house, even though I'm using VoIP for most of my stuff, mainly because you're guaranteed by SEC rules, by the FCC, to have a dial tone on a permanent landline. Just a note. 
Yeah, we, but, we, if you, but if you right lose, now, you know, when we wind up, we realized whenever COVID-19 hit and we started to have to work a little bit remotely, uh, we realized the systems, that, the struggles we're having with the old phone system we have now, uh, we don't have the capabilities to go and check voicemails without being there or answer the phones without being there. Uh, we reached out to AT&T and we've had issues before with AT&T and their, you know, their, their, their cable issues on there. So this is a recommendation that we thought would be best uh, to try to get us a little more flexibility and obviously a significant cost savings in there. I so think, Mark, I, Mark, I wanted to follow up with a question to you. you. You talked about guaranteed landline. So if there's a major power outage, there's no power anywhere. Are you still going to have a landline? On, on a telco landline, it is powered by the central office equipment where your phone plugs into. And they have, by law, by F F FCC law and regulations, they have to have a backup power supply. And I mean a humongous backup power supply. It powers the entire building. It's usually one of those big Cummings, whatever you call them, uh, you know, full building power supplies. And that, that's what central office, I grew up in telcos most of my life. And with VoIP systems, you don't have that. Yeah, I think uh, Mark has a point, but I think kind of a counter to that would be in order for that to really be an issue, that means you've lost all internet traffic. So you've lost your ability to control SCADA and everything else. So you, you have a lot of problems in addition to your phone system. You're still on I'm speaker. just talking about, yeah, I'm just talking about emergency services. That's, that's all. You, you can lose your ability to do a 911 call out of your building if you don't have a permanent landline. Bill? I want to make sure that I understood the general manager to say that he had used this system at the prior, uh, prior county was associated with and finds it satisfactory? That's correct. Yeah, I would say in general, pretty much any corporation you deal with has voice of IP phones. They're pretty they're everywhere now. Yeah. Can you see Mark? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're they're everywhere. In fact, they've got some usually some very nice features over landlines, like uh, being you know, you could have a VoIP phone there at the office and it actually rings through to my cell phone rather than at the office. Yeah. So there's all kinds of forwarding and everything else because it's all internet packets. It's all yep. you know. Yeah, this is a, traffic and it can be routed anywhere. Yeah, the ease of functionality. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but on the ease of functionality behind the scenes, being able to set up the call trees and being able to uh, access the system and modify on the fly is kind of what we're looking for. Yeah, this is not necessarily new technology. It's been around for many, many years now. Yeah, 10, 10 or 15 years, easy. Yeah, I was about to say 20. Actually, actually you may find that you're a little too connected. It's usually a little too well connected. You got you're a little more reachable than you used to be. You can't yeah. get away from it. You yeah. want to say that the the company who installed the original phone system back when the town and mother were together, district were together, uh, they are recommending uh, trying to get rid of the old system because it's not being supported anymore. There is no warranty. There is no support on the system. Uh, we tried to replace a power supply in there off of another older unit they had. Uh, it still did not solve the issue, so we would at some point down here have to have to cross the bridge and, and figure out what to do with the phone system. If we stayed with the, the old dial up. I'll make. I'd like to make a motion. If there are no other comments or questions, you have the floor, Mr. Wilson. Make a motion that we approve contract number two zero two zero zero eight one seven zero one, as presented in the packet. Uh, motion by Director Wilson to approve uh, what, is set, what is recommended by staff regarding the approval of the new telephone system. Do we have a second? I'll second. Kelly seconds. Questions? Further comments? All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion passes we put a, unan unanimously. We didn't put a money cap on that motion. That motion didn't have a money cap. It's 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 contractual in the for the contract, yeah. For the contract. 
Okay, item four, consider and take appropriate action regarding the approval or of removal and replacement of existing pavement in and along the fire lane in front of 100 Municipal Drive as part of the fiscal year 2020 capital improvement projects and authorize general manager to execute the necess necessary documents. Uh, Alan, Mike, who's taking the lead on this one? I don't mind taking it. So we're looking at replacing paving in front of the mud building. Uh, we have a lot of paving where rebar is even sticking out of the ground. Uh, we're starting to consider it even a safety issue for you know people parking if they're walking around the back of their cars and everything. And we wanna keep it in good shape. So that's what this contract is for. We're gonna start at the front and start replacing paving down municipal drive in front of the mud building. And what's the timing on that, Mike? Um, I don't think the timing is going to be an issue at all. I mean, I think once it's approved, I think we can get it done probably two or three weeks. We're going to have to, so we're going to have to shut down one side, do one side of the paving and still allow customers in and then move over to the other side just to make sure, you know, we can keep traffic coming in and out. This is later on on the agenda item, but um, is this going to occur before the elections or after? It will, we will probably be done by, yeah, we'll be done by election before. time. Okay. Yes. We're not going to. Once they start, Mike, how long does it take? Is it a couple days, a week? Um, we're going to do it side by side. So I'm assuming, yeah, week, week and a half, maybe two weeks to get it all done. A week aside, by the time they pour it, let it cure. I mean, usually you let concrete sit for about three days before anybody drives on it. Any other questions, comments of staff? Bill. Uh, there were three quotes. Uh, the document, uh, the packet mentions three quotes. I wonder who they were from and what the amounts were for the quotes. So we just put the smallest quote in there in the packet. So one of the quotes we got again was from Felix Construction. It was 4650 a square foot. The other one was for $38 a square foot. But they was this, was have a $1,500 mobilization fee, and it was from DFW Services. Okay, thank Those you. Any other questions of staff? Okay, someone would like to make a motion. Mark? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the staff recommendation for the removal and replacement of the uh, pavement in front of the 100 municipal drive. Uh, not Cost not to exceed $56,127.97 to remark construction and authorize the general manager to execute it. Okay, Mark has made uh, the motion for replacement of the existing pavement along the fire lane, 100 Municipal Drive uh, in the amount of not to exceed 56, 127, 97. This contract is for Raymar. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Bill. Questions? All those in favor, show your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Unanimously. Uh, item five, consider take appropriate action regarding approval for audio visual upgrades to the board uh, room as part of the 2020 capital improvement projects and authorize general manager to execute the necessary documents. Alan, is this uh, yours? I can take this one. 
the board had previously approved in this year's budget $100,000 for audio and video upgrades to the boardroom. Uh, as y'all have been told and are aware, our system is uh, outdated and we really have no way to repair anything. If, if we have anything go out, we have to mail it off and get repairs done. And I'm not sure, uh, y'all have to correct me if I'm wrong, Lori, but if we have anything that goes wrong, we're not sure if there's any replacement parts left anymore. Uh, so originally we were looking at a budget of $100,000. Uh, Lori has been investigating and reaching out to three different, actually I think four, four different vendors and uh, we were able to be provided with everything we were looking for, which includes all new audio and visual equipment in the, in the cabinet and four new cameras along with the tablet control process. And the quote, the lowest quote actually came in at 41,000. I think it was digital resources that came in around 75 or 76,000 yeah. and forward video came in at around 112,000 and everything is comparable. So we use the same, same equipment quotes and send it out to each different vendors. We just blacked everything out. So they were quoting on the same equipment, just didn't know what the pricing was from the other vendors. So Alan, uh, I, I kind of missed the first part. What, what does all of the quote include? If you can go over that so one more time. The video and audio equipment that's in the rack in the back room that runs the current audio and video system. So everything that runs the camera, all the microphones, the connectivity to the monitors, that's all of that equipment in that corner room. Basically, we're gonna pull everything out except for the existing rack. We're gonna plug in the new equipment, program it, and set it up for ease of control and use. And four new cameras. They will have pan, zoom and tilt. Did you say something about laptops as well or did I miss that? No, laptops are already, we already have plenty of laptops. Uh, and I believe we're going to go ahead and probably upgrade the computer that's in the back, but we already have one in stock. I believe Bob told us, our IT person told us that we could utilize what we had. Steve, they were going to pass out tablets, I think, to the employees out on, in the field. Mike? I was just saying we be right as COVID hit, Stephen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we ordered all directors new laptops and I think we have them. Correct. We got them all sitting right now waiting to be used, uh, but we're going to purchase those earlier this year. So that was already done, budgeted for, paid for, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And that's not related to this, correct? Right. Correct. Other questions, comments of staff? I'll make a motion. Okay. I make a motion that we approve purchase acquisition of the uh, the video tech um, video and audio system for the boardroom not to in the amount not to exceed four to one thousand sixty seven dollars and thirty seven cent and authorize the general manager to execute the necessary documents. Motion by Director Wilson to replace the equipment as was outlined uh, in the uh, uh, audiovisual upgrades to the boardroom, not to exceed 41,067 and 37 cents, and authorize the general manager to execute the same. Do I have a second? Mark seconds. Questions, further commentary? All those in favor, show your hand. It is unanimous. Okay. Uh, item six, consider and take appropriate action regarding November 3rd, 2020 uh, director election. A, adopt order number 2020-0817A, call an election. B, approve notice of appointment of agent. C, approve joint election agreement and contract for election services with Denton County. D, authorize general manager to sign and execute all necessary documents related to the election. And E, authorize other necessary actions as may be necessary um, or convenient for conducting the November 3rd, 
2020 election. Uh, I guess this is Alan, Lori, maybe Tony. Uh, I can take this on a little bit. If the board recalls, we originally called the director election for May 2nd, which is the standard election date for the election of directors of water districts. Uh, due to COVID-19, the board previously adopted an order um, postponing that election in accordance with the governor's order um, under some guidance issued by the Secretary of State. Um, all political subdivisions conducting an election um, that had been postponed from May to November are required by August 17th, which is today, to adopt an order uh, reflecting the necessary amendments to the original election order and that's the purpose of this item it, it changes some of the dates for early voting it didn't reopen the candidacy period um, but it just reflects some of the dates that are applicable to a november election instead of a, a may election the voting times and places the exhibits will be attached once they're received at this point we don't don't have that documentation yet Okay, Bill. I move to adopt order number 2020-08117A calling the election and approve notice appointment of agent and approve joint election agreement and contract for election services with Denton County and authorize the general manager to sign and execute all necessary documents related to the election and authorize other necessary actions as be necessary or convenient for conducting the November 3rd, 2020 election. Director Rose moves to take uh, to approve the November 3rd, uh, 2020 election uh, elections items A through E in totality. Further discussions? No. Nope. Oh, second. I'm sorry. I need a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll second. No, you, you're you're tough. On, you're good on seconds today. <laughs> Y'all are beating me to first or making motions. Okay, so Director Rose moves. Kelly seconds. All those in favor, show your hand. No time for discussion. <laughs> I like you, to, you, I like you, to hear Director Rhodes repeat that double time. <laughs> there's, like a reason why we didn't, there's a reason why no. we didn't have destruction, uh, this discussion on an outgoing uh, current board member. All those in favor, show your hand. Thank you. That's unanimous. Uh, item seven, consider and take appropriate action regarding the banking and depository matters. A, approve depository pledge agreement with Pros Prosperity Bank. Stephen, I believe this is yours. That'd be mine. Uh, our current contract with Prosperity Bank expires at the end of September. Uh, we've been with them five years. We did a three-year contract with a two-year extension. Uh, the staff's recommendation uh, after reviewing different rates, four rates, and looking at the, the way the economy is right now, uh, the staff's recommendation is to do another two-year contract with Prosperity Bank uh, and then go out uh, after two years for any other bids. Just so do we do, do any current homework or bids this time or are we just extending yes. it? Uh, so we did, I did look at a few of the other places, local banks around, ones that we've have used and ones local. Um, there, there's not very many competitiveness right now due to the economy, due to everything going on. Um, you know, Prosperity is competitive when it comes to their floor rates. Uh, but the main thing that says Prosperity Bank aside over everybody else is they are not charging us any bank fees, any operational fees, uh, which puts them ahead of any of the local banks that we've had. They got votes on and bids on. So that's why I recommend staying with Prosperity because uh, they are competitive and then we don't have any additional fees and so we currently use now. Any other questions? I'd like to make a motion to, uh, does anybody have questions? Mr. Wilson? Nope. Oh, Kelly, go. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve the depository pledge agreement with Prosperity Bank. Motion by Secretary Treasurer Castingay to approve depository pledge agreement with Prosperity Bank. Do we have a second? Bill Rose seconds. Commentary, questions? All those in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. 
Item eight, consider and take appropriate action regarding fiscal year 2021 budget matters. A, consider and take appropriate action to approve resolution number 2020-0817A as an apple, amending the fiscal year bud 2020 budget. Uh, Alan, Stephen, who wants to take the lead here? I'll take this one. Uh, so we normally would go out for a budget amendment. Uh, we would try to do this in March, but due to the uh, shelter in place in March, we postponed going out for budget amendment then, and we're doing one for, it would be one time this fiscal year. There's a few items that we want to clean up, a few items that the board has already approved. For instance, doing well number one, a few of the capital items throughout the year. Uh, so we're cleaning those up, getting uh, some of those out of what we recommended we do at a prior year reserves. Uh, and then we're offsetting a few of the expense lines that are either over or under. Uh, at the end of the day, when everything gets wrapped up, uh, we are looking at gaining some more surplus uh, and cleaning up you know, from the revenues to the expenses. And then I also did a year-to-date projections where we think our surplus is going to be by the end of the year based on this year's budget. So do I read it right, Stephen? The net effect to all of this is a positive 42891 to budget? That is correct. Okay. Bill. I move to approve resolution number 2020-0817A, amending the fiscal year 2020 budget. Director Rose moves to take appropriate action uh, for resolution 2020-0817A, amending the fiscal year 2020 budget. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mark seconds. Further questions? Bill? I want to commend the finance manager for an outstanding presentation on this budget amendment. It was easy to follow through and is, I think, extremely well done. Thank you. Great job, Stephen. All right, if there's no further commentary, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion, motion passes unanimously. Item nine, consider take appropriate action regarding tax rates for 2020 tax year. A, approve proposed tax for 2020 tax year, and B, schedule a date and authorize publication of notice for hearing regarding the adoption of final tax rates for 2020 tax year. Stephen? I'll take this one too while we're at it. All right, uh, what we have here is work, working on our tax rate for this year. Uh, we have reviewed this last month on the tax rate uh, and then we're also in our joint meeting. Yeah. We are under the uh, new voter approved rate and my recommendation is the overall tax rate that we have shown here. Uh, and then we also have, I have it detailed out how the tax rate is calculated. Uh, I have the worksheet coming from the comptroller to calculate everything for the public that we will send out and put on our website. And then also attaches a water district notice program hearing for tax rate. This is what will be posted in the paper for all the public to see. Is that on, uh, Stevens, that's 181 and 182, is that in the deck? What you're so, referring to? I'm sorry, on 180 is our is our summary page for our budget. So it breaks down all of our tax, yeah. everything's calculated from MO, fire, and then the INS side of it. Uh, and then it shows the reduction in tax as far as the overall tax rate. Uh, this is with the most updated certified numbers I have from both Denton County and Tarrant County. Uh, if you go to 181, this is a breakout of all the taxes and how they're calculated. Um, you know, when it comes to the fire, the PID, uh, the INS side of it, everything's calculated and broken down there. If you pay attention to the, towards the bottom of 181, you will see in gray, the overall tax rate for fiscal year 21, and then the voter approval rate. What is unique uh, for going forward with the, um, that went out is that we will be able to bank the difference and be able to hold it uh, for three years, up to three years, and we have to apply that to a tax rate that we need to in the future. My recommendation is to approve the proposed tax rate. Uh, and then the next form here is going to be the form that we have to fill out and publish, which is a breakout of the average home from last year to this year to do calculation. And then the 184 to 185 is going to be the publication. These requirements uh, in the water codes that needs to be the verbiage that needs to be in there. They have updated this since prior years. 
So if you read everything there, the best way to look at it is 184. See where the average homestead is going to be with exemptions uh, and then the annual increase, decrease in tax rates. So for the average person, it is a $5.66 increase from a prior year annually. Alan, before we go on, do we have somebody else joining us? Yeah, that's uh, Pritchard Beavis. He is our uh, counsel that's going to be discussing the agenda item in closed session. Okay, okay. I, I saw the name and I just wanted to make sure. Tony? Uh, one comment to Stephen or, or Lori. Um, on the second page of your proposed notice, um, there's a reference to if the district is a district described by 4923601 and then another paragraph for 2602 and then 2603. I will tell you with most of my other clients, we are um, utilizing only the paragraph that's applicable to the district. Um, in, in this case, the district is a developed district, so it's the 3.5% the paragraph, but um, I would recommend you not include all three ones and only include the paragraph that's applicable to the MUD. Thank you. And I can send you a word version if that helps you. That'd be great, thank you. Sure. I just wanna make sure I got everything in your clients. <laughs> no? I uh, momentarily lost my video, my Zoom link with you, so I missed the discussion on uh, pages, come on back it. Uh, the discussion of the uh, tax rate worksheet. And I had a question on, I'm on page uh, 182 of the packet. And perhaps you covered it while I was bounced off. The 2019 general exemption is 2,629 and the 2020 general exemption is $4,119. What's the difference? What so the general exemption, uh, 2019 got updated from last year. Um, so this is what their, their best guess estimate on here. Uh, this is from the counties from certified numbers and one of us from estimated certified numbers. This is coming from the counties directly. Uh, based and on it, and it, it's not exemptions that the district adopts bill. So it, it's not affirmative exemptions adopted by the board. Instead, it represents a number given by the county, the difference between the appraised value and the taxable value. So it, it's um, just kind of a math equation as opposed to an exemption granted by the district. Okay, so it's something that we do not calculate. It's something that's given to us by the tax district. Correct. Correct. Thank and you. it does update. So when next year comes around, it could be lower when we actually see what the year exemption wants to be in. Other questions? I will entertain a motion. Still entertaining a motion. Can someone entertain me? The, the recommended motion would be a motion for the board to adopt a proposed tax rate for tax year 2020 um, in the amount recommended by staff. I'm sorry. I, I second, it. Tony. <laughs> no, that, that's your motion, Kelly. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed tax rate for 2020 tax year and B, scheduled date and authorized publication of notice for hearing regarding adoption of final sales tax rates for 2020 tax year. Secretary Treasurer Casting Gay uh, moves to approve the 2020 tax rate. Uh, a, approved tax rate for 2020 tax year and B, scheduled date and authorized publication notice for hearing regarding adoption and final tax rates for 2020 tax year. Do I have a second? Second. Second, um, Vice President Chapman, further discussion? Uh, that, only a, sorry, Bill, go ahead. Does that, does, does that motion require the tax rates to be included in it? No, not for water districts and um, so we're a little different than municipalities. Okay. Um, but I think the final motion will reflect, in the minutes will reflect the proposed tax rate to make that clear as a matter of record. Um, 
Uh, just question for the board. Your regular meeting date would be September 21st. Um, we're, we'll be publishing notice of that. So if that's not a good date for any of you, it would be very, very helpful for you to let that staff know now um, since we're locking in that date. Thank you. Okay, so we had uh, the motion um, by Director, uh, Secretary Treasurer Casting Gay, seconded by Vice President Chapman. All those in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. Uh, and I believe that is everything on the regular agenda. So at this point in time, we are going to adjourn to executive session. It is 7.13 p.m. And is that Steve, the please, yeah, and announce that the purpose of doing so is to seek yeah. legal oh, advice oh, and sorry. opinion. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Tony. So in executive session, uh, uh, say that again, Tony? You read it, pursue it to. Okay, pursue it to section 551.071, the Texas Open Meeting Act. And the board may consult with his attorney in executive session on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the government body under disciplinary rules and professional contact of the state of Texas clearly conflicts with the Open Meetings Act or to seek advice of counsel on legal matters involving pending or contemplated litigation of settlement offers. A, Trophy Club Municipal, municipal Utility District 1 versus Acadia Services LLC in the District Court of Tarrant County, 141st Judicial District, cause number 141-299351-18. It is now 714 and we will enter executive session. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, um, just one quick second here. Sure. Yeah, don't we need to turn off the recorder, Alan? Yeah. It is 7.34, and we will now convene back into regular session. No action items or decisions or votes were taken in executive session. Regular session item 11, uh, consider take appropriate action. Oops, there was none of that. We already said that. Uh, item 12, future agendas. Anybody have anything for future agenda items? No? Right. Next month we'll, we'll adopt the budget and final tax rates, obviously. Yes. Uh, obviously we talked about this just now, regular board meeting. The next regular board meeting is September 21st, 2020 at 6.30. It is now 7.35 and we are adjourned.